In this video, I show you how to create pockets for magnets that you can glue into your 3D printed models, which creates less work, less mess, and less danger to destroy your models when you drill into them after printing. Magnets can make it easier to paint your models since you don't have to struggle with holding the pieces together. And another advantage is that if you should have a breakage, you can easily replace the part. The quick and dirty method is to just use your slicer tool and put a hole in the key of the model after hollowing. I would go for a hole size that is half a millimeter taller than your magnet. And then after printing, you can take a stack of magnets and glue one magnet into place using super glue. In order to make sure that you don't glue together the magnets themselves, I take aluminum foil or saran wrap to create a barrier between them. Since super glue cures very slowly on resin parts, use an accelerator spray and in 5 seconds it will be cured enough to remove the other magnets. And then you just need to repeat this step for the other side and you're done. By the way, I didn't use the hole in the key here because that was too big for the magnets I had. But with this method, there is the danger that you glue in the magnets at an angle, creating a gap between your parts, or the magnet just falls into your part because the wall thickness and or the contact surface for the glue is too small. And to avoid that, I'm creating dedicated magnet pockets before printing, which I will show you now. To incorporate magnets into the models, I'm using the free tool Blender, but it also works in Mesh Mixer, so I'm going to show you both. This is the scene we end up with after starting Blender. I firstly delete the default cube, camera and light and then I go to file, import, STL and select a torso and arm for this example. On the lower right corner you can follow my keystrokes. I left click and select the part, press G to grab, set to or Z to limit the movement to the Z axis and then move the part to the right position by moving the mouse up and down. I'm usually importing a STL file of the magnets that I'm using, which is currently 8x3 and 6x3 millimeters. But I'm now showing you how you can create them in Blender as well. Just make sure that your virtual magnets are a bit bigger than the real magnets. In my case, I added 0.5 millimeters in the diameter and height to make sure the magnet does fit into the pocket after printing. If you press Shift plus A, a menu opens where you select Mesh Cylinder and a new default cylinder pops up at the center. Selecting it and going to the item menu at the sidebar, you can set the correct dimensions for your magnet. Only note that meters in Blender are millimeters, at least for me, don't ask me why. But let me know when you know. But you can see that the newly created magnet has the same size as the one I created with the CAD program. Now with g to grab I navigate the magnet to the shoulder. Then I make the arm invisible by clicking the eye icon in the object browser on the right side. Then I navigate the magnet to the mail key by pressing G to grab and additionally R to rotate. Again pressing X, Y and Z or Z after pressing G to grab or R to rotate to lock the movement to the corresponding axis. Once the magnet is in the correct position, I select the torso, go over to the modifier tool and add a boolean modifier. With the pipette, I'm selecting the magnet and now the magnet is cut out of the torso. Hiding the magnet will show you the final result. It is important that you apply the modifier. Otherwise, if you move the magnet, the boolean operation will be changed as well. Now you could use the same magnet to put it into the arm, but I will copy it by pressing Shift and D to duplicate and then navigate the second magnet into the arm. You can also switch on X-ray mode to look into the model. After applying the boolean modifier again, the magnet is also cut out of the arm and you now have two pockets where you can insert magnets after printing without additional effort. And if you are too lazy to manually move and rotate the magnet to its destination, you can also activate the snap tool 
While the magnet is selected, set the snapping mode to face and align rotation. And then as soon as you go near the torso, the magnet snaps onto the surface and you can easily drag it where you need it. Then deactivate the snapping tool and pull the magnet out a bit, add the boolean modifier, make the magnet invisible and done. To not have any unpleasant surprises, make sure when you export the STL file to either remove the magnets by selecting and deleting them or enable the selection only option in the export window. Otherwise Blender will export all the files from the object browser, although you might have selected only one. And here you can see the FDM printed result of the shoulder part with a magnet pocket. Now for the completeness and also because we started the series in Mesh Mixer, I'm also showing you how you can do it with Mesh Mixer if you prefer that. The first step in Mesh Mixer is to click import and then select all the files you want to have. In our case here, the right arm and torso of Joker. With a left click we can select the model directly or in the object browser on the right side. With the arm selected we go to edit and transform and then we grab the green arrow and drag the arm to the correct position. If the position snaps every 2.5 mm, uncheck the enable snapping option. Then we make the arm invisible by clicking on the eye icon in the object browser. Similar to what we did in Blender. With the torso selected we go to mesh mix and then select a cylinder and drag the cylinder directly onto the surface of the key. Clicking and dragging that arrow tip thingy to make the cylinder smaller. Or you directly use the dimensions tab on the left top corner to set the dimension which is diameter and height. In this case it should be something like 4.5 mm in diameter for the pocket, which means you should use a 4 mm magnet. Then I hit accept and change the name of the magnet to not confuse it with the second one we'll need for the arm. Then I go to transform and pull the cylinder, that we're now calling magnet, out of the torso to set the final dimensions. In this case the y direction re represents the height of the magnet, which I'm setting to 2.5 mm and the 4.5 mm as diameter stays like it is. Now we navigate the magnet back to the torso, leaving a small fraction of the magnet sticking out of the torso. That's why it's important to also add half a millimeter or so to the height of the actual magnet. Now I'm duplicating the magnet in the object browser on the lower right corner to also have one for the arm. With the arm being selected, holding shift and clicking onto the magnet will select both of them. Usually the boolean operation option opens on the upper left corner next, which strangely didn't happen here. But that's not a problem, clicking on edit opens the right toolbar where we are going to hit boolean difference. Now the magnet gets subtracted from the arm. To increase the quality of the operation I up the preview iterations and reduce the target edge which then takes a while to calculate depending on your computer. That's why I prefer Blender for doing this. There you don't need to worry about any settings and the performance is better. Anyways, hitting accept will now apply the boolean operation and we are done with the pocket for the arm. And we are doing the same thing for the torso. Here you see the problem when you are using the default values for the boolean difference. That looks pretty bad. Tweaking those values makes it better though. And with that you could now export your new files. After a model is printed I go ahead and mark my magnets to not accidentally glue the magnets into the pieces in the wrong direction. This way I know the side with the red dot is the side where the glue goes on. And here you can see the fitting test for a 8mm magnet into a 8.5mm pocket. Then I'm mixing 5 minute epoxy and glue all the magnets into the pockets. And one extra tip when you mark the magnets, also make sure to not interchange them. Don't be as stupid as I am. 
Okay, that was how I incorporate magnets into the models before printing them, which saves a lot of headache and work. At least if you do it right. In the next video I will show you how I cut parts in pieces if they don't fit my printer. So stay tuned.